Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, uh, welcome back into this uh, flamelet discussion that we were uh, doing. Uh, so, we have uh, essentially shown you that by obtaining the, by solving the continuity momentum uh, k uh, equation, epsilon equation and then solving for the mean uh, mixture fraction equation and the variance of mixture fraction equation, we can essentially uh, be in a very powerful position so that uh, after that if you obtain a PDF of that of the mixture fraction we can using this chamber flame uh, 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 assumption uh, that uh, at each point in the flow uh, wherever you have a flame that essentially the whole flame is uh, composed of numerous flamelets and this all these flamelets obey the 1D chamber flame solution where your uh, enthalpy can be written as a function of Z or your reactive scalar can be written as a function of Z uh, and immediately. Uh, we can uh, by by doing the presumed shared PDF, we can just go and find out the mean mixture mean uh, mean uh, uh, scalar uh, of uh, mean reactive scalar at each point in the flow using that presumed uh, shared PDF. Now that of course the 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 penalty is that you assume that uh, each at each point in the flow your equation your your uh, your flamelet behaves in a manner which is exactly equal to the ideal one d laminar flame. Okay, now that is that can be a reasonable approximation as you have said that that is a good approximation as long as your um, uh, as long as your uh, your uh, flamelet um, your uh, fuel uh, reaction zone thickness is essentially smaller than the Kolmogorov length scale so that your eddies does not disturb the reaction zone thickness. But uh, uh, well, uh, the thing is that uh, that may it, that might be mostly true, but in cases where it is not true, then this assumption, this whole thing fails. Okay, so um, uh, we have to find out an, another better method by which we can find out psi, uh, this reactive scalar mass fraction as a function of uh, the the mixture fraction, and we'll see how can be done, how it can be done. So we'll see that this laminar flame is the structure of a non-premix flame. So first uh, assumption is that we will assume equal diffusivities for the chemical species and temperature. So uh, D L E I is essentially uh, lambda, which is the thermal conductivity divided by rho C P D I is equal to one, and D I is equal D I is equal to D uh, essentially, and D is equal to lambda by rho C P. So it's a generalized diffusivity, which is also equal to the D I. Okay, so that is the thing. Okay, now. Okay, we have shown that uh, that uh, that of course using the uh, the uh, the the uh, the, uh, the different y i's uh, we can obtain uh, uh, so we can obtain an equation for the mixture fraction and this is the mixture mixture fraction equation so which we have essentially averaged and uh, found out um, uh, the the z uh, tilde and the z uh, variance of z. And of course, we can obtain a mixture fraction equation like this. Okay, so this is a mixture fraction equation, and uh, this is our temperature equation. Whereas this alpha is essentially the repeated indices. On the right hand side, you have the heat release, you have the radiation, you have the the pressure fluctuation term, and this is the species mass fraction equation. Okay, so these are all the equations, and of course, you have to you have the continuity and the and the momentum equation also along with it, and uh, so those needs to be solved in the entire flow, of course. Okay. Now, what we do is that we uh, want to do want to first define a surface of stoichiometric mixture fraction that we call essentially as our flame. Okay. So, once we have solved for this, okay, so we define a surface of stoichiometric mixture fraction Zx alpha or this Zx uh, at any position x is equal to Zst. And because the fact is that the combustion occurs near the vicinity of the surface because ZST is essentially that mm, uh, location where the your mixture fraction is at stoichiometric value and that is as we have seen before that the flame always stabilizes at the point where the, your, mm, uh, your, uh, your scalars uh, uh, reactive scalars the fuel and oxidizer are essentially meeting at a stoichiometric value. Okay, uh, that is apparent from the for fact that the flame temperature is uh, adiabatic flame temperature in a non-premix flame as well. 
so, what we do is that we do uh, uh, this uh, by this thing, um, by this assumption that the flame is essentially the uh, located at the point where your uh, mixture fraction is at a stoichiometric value. Uh, we can essentially want to do or we want to do a coordinate transformation so that we go from the physical space of x, uh, x1, x2, x3, or that is x, y, z, and time into this space which is the mixture fraction z and z2 and z3. So, what, to, what we do is that we say that say this is our uh, any generalized structure of a flame. So, say the fuel is coming from the central part and this air is coming from outside. Okay. So, of course, then the mixture fraction z value is equal to 1 at the center, z is equal to z outside and then you have the flame stabilized like this. So, we say that at any point in the flame, okay, so our z is perpendicular to the flame surface okay, because this is the z uh, equal to z stoichiometric, this is the flame surface. Okay, so, of course, if this is the isocontour of z, then of course, z cannot vary along the isocontour. So, then z must be varying perpendicular to the isocontour okay. and this is uh, z and this is also we define a local coordinate system which is essentially x1 and then we have the other two coordinate system uh, two, two, two coordinates x2 and x3 and which are also like z2 and z3 also. Okay. So, z is not equal to x1, but x2 is equal to z2 and x3 equal to z3. So, this is our local coordinate system, whereas x1, x2 and x3 are essentially our uh, is essentially a um, Cartesian coordinate system, uh, whereas this z is essentially the mixture fraction. Okay. But you see the idea is that, that uh, here it is always perpendicular to the, to the flame surface um, uh, because uh, we have defined the flame surface to be essentially z is equal to zst, where the mixture fraction is constant. Okay. So, now what we want to do is that we want to express all these quantities temperature and y i as a function of z okay. and that will follow this, this different transformation rules. That is we will see that this, uh, this transformation rules will be followed. Now, why is that so? We can, can be shown in a simple manner um, by the following that is uh, if we define a quantity like this that uh, say f or say j i i. Okay. is a function of z, z1, uh, z2, z3 and tau. Okay. So, this is the tr uh, transformation this x1, x2, x3 is equal to z, z2, z3 and tau. Okay. So, then del j i i del t is essentially del j i i del tau times del tau del t plus del j i i del z times del z del t plus del j i i del z alpha times del z alpha del t. Of course, you see this is because uh, the and of course, uh, you see that there is uh, the our assumption is that that uh, x 2 is equal to z 2 and x 3 is equal to z 3 and t is equal to tau. So, then this is of course, equal to 1 and this since z alpha is independent of t this is equal to 0. Okay. So, then we are left with this part. So, we can write that d di partial rho dot tau t is equal to essentially rho dot tau plus d chi i d z times partial rho z rho t. Okay. So, this is uh, essentially the transformation of a coordinate transformation where you go from a uh, uh, physical spatial coordinates to uh, 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 a variable uh, uh, to a coordinate which is essentially one of the dependent variables of the system itself which is z. And so, this is how you do the coordinate transformation and is essentially done was inspired by the Kroko transformation which was applied for boundary layers. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, the thing and using this uh, type of uh, approaches you can uh, obtain the other thing also this is what we just derived okay and you can uh, derive this uh, dodo do x alpha also in terms of z so essentially you are transforming what you want to do is that that xi i okay is written in terms of x1 x2 x3 and t okay and you want to basically transform into xi i that is a reactive scalar in terms of z uh, z um, uh, z 2 uh, z 3 and tau 
Okay, essentially, and we will show that this variation along this, uh, this uh, 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 the only variation that will be important is essentially variation along z and variation along z2 and z3 will not be important because uh, xi i is also a flame property, right? Uh, is also a reactive scalar, and uh, xi i will vary only uh, perpendicular to the direction of the flame. Okay, so if this is a flame, uh, we have uh, so fuel. Uh, these are the fuel. Iso uh, this is the mixture fraction isocontour. So the the fuel will not vary. To the fuel mass fraction will not vary too much along this flame uh, surface, right? It will vary perpendicular to the flame surface. So that is why I will show that these variations along this will be small, and essentially it will become a equation for like this. So that is the idea. So you saw that uh, that. Um, in the previous presumed shape PDF approach, what we did was that we wrote that xi i is just a function of z as it is in a 1D chambered flame. Okay? So, but here what we want to do is that we want to derive an equation by which we can write the variation of xi i as z, z as an independent variable. So, we want to write xi as a we want to find out a governing equation by which xi i can be expressed as a function of z. So, that is what we are trying to do here and for that we have uh, introduced this thing where essentially your um, z is perpendicular to the to the is perpendicular to the um, z where is perpendicular to the flame uh, which is the uh, isocontour of z itself um, uh, and uh, that is that is defined by z x t is equal to z s t. Okay. So, this is the this is the approach and uh, to do that we introduce this coordinate transformations and which were obtained by like this that is dou dou t is essentially dou dou tau plus dou z dou t uh, plus dou dou z and dou dou x alpha is essentially is equal to dou dou z alpha alpha going for 2 to 3 this uh, plus dou dou z times dou dou x alpha times dou dou z um, and dou dou x alpha this is very important x 1 that is the in the direction of the perpendicular to the x 2 and x 3 is essentially dou dou z times divided by dou dou x 1 times dou dou z. You can just just the way we showed that the first transformation you can do the other transformations also. Okay. Now, after you do the transformations, you can have a transformed energy in the equation, you get a complicated equation like this. Okay. This is all the, the transient term, the transport terms, but you see now you have your mm, this uh, mixture on the left hand side your um, uh, 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 this is eliminated uh, your uh, x coordinate is eliminated and you have transport um, convection in the z space. Okay. But of course, you have this x uh, coordinates also and then you have this term and then you have all these different terms and the right hand side remains same which is essentially the heat release rate radiation and pressure fluctuations. But it can be argued that essentially these variations that d d z dou dou z in terms of x 2 dou dou z and x dou 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 z dou x 3 dou z dou x 2 okay, uh, dou 2 t dou 2 z 2 and dou 2 t dou 2 z dou z 3 square I mean these will essentially can be neglected okay, because these will be small because the reason is that this is your flame. Okay, and uh, the temperature is mainly varying like this on the two sides of the flame. Okay, say this is the fuel side and this is the oxidizer side. So on these variation, okay, this is the this is the temperature. Mm, so the temperature is 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 much strongly varying on the on along along this direction, okay, uh, than along this direction. So this temperature variation is much stronger. As a result, we can be able to neglect all these variations that is happening along the uh, along the isocontour of uh, of Z itself. So that is the idea, and this all can be neglected. And once you do that, um, uh, this what we will see is that uh, that the dominant term that will emerge um, is essentially uh, uh, the the dominant term that will uh, emerge is essentially this term. So the dominant term that will uh, uh, emerge is essentially this uh, this term, okay, and all other terms can be essentially neglected. So we'll talk about these dominant terms later, okay. So uh, this is the uh, assumption of a very thin flamelet in z direction, and use order of magnitude analysis similar to the boundary layer theory. So essentially, what we'll have is that we'll have this term is an a transient term for extinction type problems, and this term, and uh, convection. Of course, uh, we have also we'll also uh, neglect because we are only interested what happens in the vicinity of the flame. Okay, in the where the temperature gradients or the scalar gradients are very very strong, but only the scalar gradients in the normal directions are very very strong. That is along or scalar gradients along the z direction are very very strong. So, we will neglect only keep the transient term, we will keep the which is important for extinction or ignition type problems, we will keep this term and we will keep the source term. Okay. So, we will see what can be done with that. 
ok. So, similarly an equation of species transfer can be also uh, uh, found out. So, then we can introduce a stretch coordinate by z minus z x t and a fast time scale and uh, uh, like this and we can obtain an equation for this like this. So, the term that we will see is that as we said that the transient term is retained and this uh, the other term that is uh, uh, this term is retained ok. That is the first term on the on the that is a, uh, uh, the first term of this um, uh, of this uh, third brackets is retained and uh, this uh, right hand side source term is retained and this uh, equation is essentially called the uh, 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 this uh, equation of the reactive scalar in z space where we have essentially removed all convection. So, you have retained the, the transient term, you have retained the diffusion type of term, but in z space you must remember that and you have retained the source term. Same for the y i also. Now, you see that the for the diffusion of temperature in the z space, there is a characteristic diffusivity that is emerging and that is essentially the scalar distribution rate, okay, which is given by 2 d del z rho z dou x alpha uh, square and instantaneous scalar dissipation rate at the stoichiometric conditions and this represents essentially the inverse uh, inv inverse of the diffusion time. So, this uh, this will uh, the xi uh, is essentially is as a as a, as a uh, dimension of 1 per second. So, it emerges essentially as the um, uh, inverse of the diffusion time scales. So, this essentially gives you the flame structure of course, with simplifying assumption, but now you do not need to essentially, but with this equations, with this governing equations, we do not need to go back to that 1D chamber flame. But of course, if you go, you can obtain the 1D chamber flame from these equations also, but with these equations you have, you can obtain how temperature varies with z independently as long as you are, you know this, what is this uh, xi xt, which is a function of this dz dx alpha. Okay, uh, which is a function of uh, z again and uh, x alpha again. So, this as long as you know the local characteristic uh, diffusivity in terms of this scalar dissipation rate and uh, you are uh, one can find out how the temperature varies with the z without uh, having this simplified 1D chamber flame assumption. So, the flamelet this is another uh, refinement of the flamelet assumption, but we can follow those other steps as has been shown before. Okay. So, this transformation essentially what has it includes the convection and diffusion normal to the surface of the stoichiometric mixture and as the xi xt goes to 0 that is as the scalar that is the mixture fraction gradients disappear it approaches a homogeneous reactor ok and it is valid in the thin reaction zone near z is equal to z stoichiometric. Of course, you when you go far away from this then all those uh, things uh, that uh, things varying the reactive scalar varying only normal to the um, to the iso uh, surface of z those type of assumptions will not be valid anymore ok. So, time scales in non premix for combustion you just have a, uh, has a have a check uh, comparison between premix and non premix flames. So, this is the time scale for non premix combustion z s t square by times 1 minus z s t square uh, divided by um, this uh, uh, scalar dissipation rate and uh, for a non premix flame um, of course, and this is the quenching essentially is uh, there is a scalar dissipation rate at quenching. So, of course, when you have the very high scalar dissipation rate you will see that the flame is essentially will be quenched. and. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, this this uh, uh, this thing is uh, of course um, uh, we need to uh, uh, take care and uh, uh, th then uh, for a non premix flame uh, of course uh, uh, we'll see that uh, uh, we'll see that the uh, the premix flame the, the the time scale is essentially given by this and uh, that is the one point of uh, deviation between. Uh, um, uh, relationship between uh, non premix and uh, premix flames ok. So, uh, of course, if you compare between uh, uh, the compare the above at uh, at uh, uh, from the above at extinction you see that the non premix flame it is essentially the heat uh, uh, that is uh, conduction at the uh, 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 is essentially the, the heat that is conducted towards the lean and the rich side balances the heat generation by chemistry. Okay. So, that is what a uh, uh, non premixed uh, that is what a non premixed flame is essentially ok. So, uh, so for a non premixed flame you, you uh, its flame is situated between the fuel stream and the oxidizer stream and it conducts heat towards the lean and the rich side and that is balanced by the heat generation by chemistry. But as for a premixed flame the heat conduction happens towards unburnt happens uh, towards the unburnt mixture and, uh, and it just balances the heat generation at that burning velocity. So, uh, a diffusion flame can exist at lower xi and has lower characteristic flow time ok. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, the uh, 
Uh, of course, uh, it, then it also has the flexibility to choose the convective to the reactive time because uh, as such uh, because there is no flame speed for a non premix flame there is uh, no constraint on the fact that uh, 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 of how it should balance with the flow. However, for a non premixed uh, the, that means that the non premix combustion is essentially controllable and diffusion flames or non premix flames are stable in comparison to the premix flames. So, that is one advantage that has apart from the fact that um, though uh, despite the fact that non premix flames are more polluting the premix flame non premix flames are more stable and that is the uh, that is one um, uh, good thing about uh, um, uh, non premix flames ok. So, of course, but at, at large dry at dry quenching the flame uh, quenches um, and uh, uh, and uh, that is uh, uh, one thing we have to be careful about ok. Now, then uh, uh, we go uh, to this different uh, flame lit models where we have essentially discussed uh, this uh, stretched uh, flame lit model by Peters and Olerian particle flame lit model, Lagrangian model and the conserved uh, scalar equilibrium model and that is what we have essentially discussed uh, just before this uh, conserved scalar equilibrium model which is where we have in the pre presumed shape PDF we have essentially just um, plugged in this uh, conserved scalar equilibrium assumption or this um, uh, or this uh, this thing. So, uh, mm, uh, this 1D uh, uh, non premix flame uh, into this uh, presumed shape PDF ok. Now, going back to this uh, what we were discussing that uh, we have obtained this uh, laminar uh, we have obtained a flame surface uh, which is essentially defined by Z uh, is equal to ZST and uh, the reactive uh, diffusive structure of the flamelet at uh, near Z is equal to ZST is given by um, uh, given by this equation which is uh, we have obtained by transforming from the physical coordinate into Z space ok. And then we are just uh, recapitulating the discussion that we just had uh, 5 minutes ago and um, uh, that uh, reactive diffusive structure of this is given by this we have this uh, viral of this reactive scalar we have this by d uh, rho dj dt and this is rho divided by lei where we can use also that uh, this uh, non non unity lewis number assumptions and j i by 2 times d 2 j i i dz square plus uh, the, the of course the source term is also there okay this is in the um, reactive scalar so from y i we have gone into j i i also and uh, this is j i the scalar dissipation rate is at the defined at the flame surface j i is equal to j i s t and um, this is an external parameter essentially on the flame dust structure because of z and it is essentially the inverse of diffusion time scales and this uh, re represents the diffusivity in z space ok. Now, uh, one thing is that the, the most important thing that allows us to reduce to this uh, simple equation this very elegant and uh, beautiful equation of j i i in terms of z space is that the reactive scalars are constant along z surface ok and the fields of reactive scalars are aligned with z. The reason is that if reactive scalars are constant along z then of course, then it varies uh, 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 perpendicular to the isocontour of z ok. Uh, reactive scalars are not constant along z, reactive scalars are essentially constant along z is equal to constant surface. So, iso surface of z ok, reactive scalars are also con uh, constant along the iso surface of z and then if it has to vary this reactive scalars they must be varying along the perpendicular to the iso surface of z ok then it varies essentially along with z. So, that means the fields of the reactive scalars are aligned with z and both are transported with the flow. And now z and j are both fluctuating quantities and to calculate uh, the statistical moments and we have to consider the statistical distribution. So, uh, once again uh, we th see that uh, we need to essentially go back to this uh, uh, to the steady flamelet equations that uh, if we now have the uh, of course, uh, now if we have this uh, joint PDF of uh, this j uh, z and j s t surface is known then we can solve the steady flamelet equation to get j and its um, far average mean is given as uh, this this uh, this whole equation ok. This is once again uh, that is from the joint distribution of z and j st we can find out the mean j. However, as in instantaneous point uh, this j as a function of z this thing can be obtained from the uh, this, uh, this steady flamelet equation where of course, uh, this term has to be neglected. So, this is then valid only under the steady case that has to be remembered. Now, uh, if the unsteady case uh, if you have an unsteady flamelet equation then this joint PDF is becomes impractical and uh, then one can use multiple flamelets 
each of which essentially represents different ranges of ray distribution and uh, this is typically used in the Eulerian particle flamelet model. Okay. And uh, the scalar dissipation rate can be modeled as a function of z and the above formulation is used in modeling conditional Favre averaged uh, Favre mean scalar dissipation rate rhi z which is defined like this. As you see that this difference is that it is a conditional on z. Mm, so, it is like uh, um, uh, this This means that uh, it is uh, uh, rho times uh, scalar dissipation rate given z okay, conditional on z divided by the rho uh, given z uh, uh, and then averaged. Okay. So, then the flamelet equation in a turbulent flow is then given by this quantity then uh, you can use basically for the unsteady flamelet in this form whereas, this xi has been replaced with xi uh, tilde um, at z. Okay. So, then once again uh, uh, you have uh, come to this uh, equation, but now you see that the as I said that the original uh, 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 this, uh, this, this model that um, uh, that uh, this conserved scalar equation model or this where we have essentially plugged in the solution of this 1D chamber flame or the 1D or the equilibrium uh, uh, solution um, uh, uh, into the uh, into the um, into at each point in space uh, uh, from the PDF and the solution of z uh, average and z variance of z that we have realized by solving by accounting for this either the steady flamelet equation or the um, unsteady uh, flamelet equation where we have replaced xi with essentially xi uh, 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 this uh, Favre average of z. Okay. Now, of course, uh, there are trouble because uh, this uh, when in points which involves large departure from the mean uh, the xi z values where we, we encounter small z as well as uh, or, or uh, large uh, xi events uh, that is uh, when you have ex you when the xi is very large you go to extinction. Okay. So, um, uh, so then on one then one has to use larger simulations for that. Uh, so, that is uh, one uh, thing one has to keep in mind. So, next we go into uh, Next, we go into two advanced uh, uh, concepts of modeling turbulent non premix combustion, and uh, this we will just uh, skim through. But uh, so, in details, we have discussed this flamelet approach, and uh, these two things are more advanced and, um, and it is more complex also. But uh, we will just discuss them, and we'll, uh, these two are essentially the conditional moment closure approach by Klimenko and Bilger, and the PDF transport equation model by uh, Pope and Dupazo. And uh, we will just uh, go to this. So, the first we will go to this conditional moment closure. Mm, this is just an overview, I will not go into the details. So, uh, conditional moments you see, conditional moments are essentially this uh, just we have seen that uh, this is xi given z. So, that is typically a conditional moment. Uh, so, conditional moments are averages and variances taken from those quantities which comply with a certain condition. Okay, so, uh, if this uh, uh, conditional moment, uh, this uh, conditional PDF. Uh, this F e if, 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 if is the PDF of u is given by F u and uh, and the PDF of uh, say some quantity g is given by F g. So, in the PDF of u given g is essentially PDF of um, uh, u and uh, g divided by uh, PDF of g. Okay. So, this is the this is the how the conditional uh, from and from that uh, one can uh, obtain the the conditional uh, averages um, um, also. So, uh, so the conditional moments are averages and uh, variances and taken with quantities which comply with a certain condition and rather than taking conventional averages the condition the reactive scalars and the mixture fraction. Okay. Uh, so, we have not uh, so here in this conditional moment closure we are not uh, we will not go with directly like a mean uh, like like this uh, like uh, uh, xi i uh, average uh, that we were discussing. Okay. So, what we what we will go is that what we want is that we want something like this given an average something like this the xi i given z that at a particular point in if you know the value of z what is the that given the value of z what is the average of uh, xi i. So, that is the conditional average of z uh, conditional average of xi i given z. Okay. So, that is the what we are interested in here why because Klimenko said that turbulent diffusion can be better modeled in z space okay, and Bilger found that fluctuation of reactive scalar is associated with the fluctuation of z. So, that is uh, for this reason two reasons uh, essentially uh, both of these people uh, both of these very uh, highly uh, decorated scientists and um, uh, propose this conditional uh, moment closure models. Okay. 
So, the in the flamelet model, the flame surface statistics and laminar reactive diffusive structure is attached to the flame surface. So, uh, uh, the uh, what we have done is that we solve in the flamelet uh, model, we solve for z uh, 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 tilde mean z, Favre mean z, we solve for the variance of z uh, and then we, um, uh, we attach a diffusive reactive structure to it either by solution from 1 d or by solving j i as a function of z. Okay. In the conditional moment closure at, at fixed uh, are basically uh, here we obtain the conditional moments at fixed location and time in in the uh, time in the uh, in the flow field okay so that is the uh, that is the conditional moment closure uh, approach that we use so the conditional pdf is given by this that is a p uh, that is a prob that is a pdf of xi i given z is given by the joint pdf of xi i and z this is the joint pdf of xi i z at x and t and uh, this is the PDF of Z at X and T. So, it is a ratio the conditional PDF of uh, xi i just we saw showed now that is the conditional PDF of xi i given Z is essentially the joint PDF of xi i and Z uh, at that at a particular point divided by the PDF of Z at that particular point. Okay. And the conditional moment of the reactive scalar is given by this that is a QI uh, Z uh, X T is uh, the conditional moment of a reactive scalar is this essentially xi i given z averaged is we can find out from the conditional pdf of uh, xi i given z and if we just get the first moment of the uh, is given by the first moment xi i times the pdf of xi i given z at that uh, and we integrate between 0 and 1. So, this is how the conditional moment of a reactive scalar is defined. Okay. Now, uh, in Bilger's approach, uh, we uh, we uh, decompose the reactive scalar into conditional mean and conditional fluctuation. So we define xi i is essentially not xi i average plus xi i fluctuation. Is uh, this is a conditional mean and this is a conditional fluctuation. Okay, and using the above decomposition in the governing uh, equations for reactive scalar, uh, we obtain uh, one can obtain this equation. This is a very very important equation, which has uh, has a very important influence in the turbulent non premixed uh, um, uh, combustion modeling, and even to some extent in turbulent premixed combustion modeling. Okay, so this is the equation, and uh, on the left hand side you have a, a temporal term of this um, uh, conditional mean, uh, and then the conditional mean is transported by the mean uh, uh, velocity u z, uh, but in uh, in in z space this is not just simple uh, uh, velocity and then you have this uh, this uh, same thing uh, uh, the tr the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, um, dis the diffusion of uh, the conditional mean in z space and once again the favre average scalar dissipation rate of z appears as the diffusivity characteristic diffusivity and then you have a, um, a closure for the the the, the, the closure problem for the reaction rate Okay. So, here you see that um, this is a Favre uh, conditional velocity and uh, which is replaced by the Favre, replaced by, uh, Favre mean velocity, uh, Favre mean velocity is replaced by this and Favre conditional scalar dissipation rate and calculated based on the PDF transport equation and, um, uh, and then the Favre conditional uh, chemical source term and calculated based on the sh presumed shape PDF approach. So, those things has to be integrated and the higher moments of chemical source term are neglected and this implies that uh, we can model this xi i omega uh, this omega i that is species uh, consumption or uh, uh, production rate at a given z is essentially xi i and then this uh, 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 the as a function of this uh, um, uh, mean of uh, uh, xi i given z. So, the derivation of CMC equation follow that of the laminar flamelet concept. However, CMC has the advantage that it clearly defines identifies the xi z. So, this is the thing and next uh, we will go into the PDF transport equation model. Okay. The PDF transport equation for the velocity and reactive scalars for one point statistics uh, is at a particular point in the flow you obtain the PDF. So, here in the PDF transport equation models you do not model the um, you do not model the velocities or, or the species as such you model the pdf of that you see how the pdf is essentially is essentially changes under the effect of advection diffusion and reaction at a particular point okay so the pdf transport equation of our velocity and reactive scalars and the inclusion of velocity gradients in the reactive scalars and we have to solve the modeling issues uh, with viscous and scalar dissipation 
Okay, so this is rise is the reactive scalar and this is the PDA for finding the velocity and reactive scalar. This is joint PDA for velocity and rise of the reactive scalar and, the, uh, and this is essentially the PDA of P times du times d j uh, is essentially the probability of finding velocity and reactive scalar within u minus du and uh, u plus du and rise minus rise probability of finding rise within j minus d j and rise plus d j and uh, the PDF. Uh, transport equation for uh, the PDF uh, the, the transport equation for the probability density uh, can be obtained uh, you can see uh, Pope's book uh, for uh, this derivation it is an involved derivation and um, um, so here we have the different terms and um, you see that uh, this divergence of u is respect to the three components of velocity this uh, this means uh, this angular brackets are conditional averages with respect to fixed values of u and rai uh, this is of course much more involved as you can see that and this uh, t1 is the local rate of change at time t2 is a convective derivative in physical space mm, t3 is the transport of velocity by gravity and the mean pressure gradient by the forces and T4 is the chemical source term okay. One advantage of uh, this PDF equation is that this term is fully closed and the transport of PDF in velocity space uh, T5 is the transport of PDF in the velocity space by viscous stresses and fluctuating velocity gradient this is unclosed and uh, the T6 is the most difficult term to handle in this thing is essentially the transport in reactive scalar space and uh, this is the, the T6 uh, term okay. And you see that uh, how to do this, um, how to get this PDF is that because of high dimensionality of PDF transport equation, this this finite volume and finite difference methods are not suitable. They have a very high cost uh, when you apply these things, and so the Monte Carlo techniques are employed. And for this, the Lagrangian particle tracking algorithms are used uh, to overcome the difficulty of uh, Monte Carlo methods. And uh, for that, you have to so basically insert particles which follows the dx jdt for the jth particle is equal to ujx, and uh, this is how the reactive scalar essentially changes. So, this is just a basic um, uh, uh, very uh, brief glimpse of these two advanced techniques of conditional moment closure and uh, and uh, and the um, and the um, and the PDF methods. So, we will close this discussion on the non premix flames by just looking at to the, the regime diagrams. Mm, of course, the regime diagrams will be much more useful in the premix flames, but in non, non premix flames you can also use that. So, in this regime diagrams you have basically two uh, coordinates one on the Reynolds number. Uh, large scale Reynolds number on the x axis and the um, uh, and the and the uh, dumb colon number on the y axis. Okay. Now we define our transport um, a layer thickness, um, uh, whereas uh, uh, which is of course you don't have a, a flame thickness as such here, and neither you have a velocity scale. So we have to construct this uh, uh, transport layer thickness based on this uh, on the on the gradient of uh, z at the stoichiometric location. Mm, which is defined like this and which can be shown to scale like uh, this uh, viscosity divided by the scalar dissipation rate at i s t and then you define a transport time scale okay and the transport time scale of course is the inverse of this scalar dissipation rate at uh, the stoichiometric location and from that we can define a flame dump colon number which is essentially the ratio of the transport time scale to the chemical time scale and this is given by 1 by i s t times tau c. And now assuming Kolmogorov is to be most effective for mixing we can um, have this kind of a uh, uh, thing and we can define a revised dumb colon number which is the ratio of the flow time scale at large scales to the chemical time scale and that can be shown to be essentially square root of the uh, uh, hydrodynamic scale Reynolds number to the and times the flame dumb colon number. Okay, so, this is my y axis and this is my x axis of course you see when the Reynolds number is small then of course all flames will be laminar. Of course, when the dumb colon number is large then you will only have distributed um, uh, then uh, when the dumb colon number is large essentially you have thin reaction zones. So, you only have essentially uh, the regions which are uh, mm, we only have flames which are essentially uh, essentially uh, uh, essentially wrinkled and folded by the turbulence. Mm, so, this is the essentially the th thin reaction zones and then you have uh, when as you reduce the dumb colon number you have broken reaction zones when you cross this dumb colon number equal to uh, flame dumb colon number equal to one line. You have broken reaction zones um, when the reactions uh, get uh, uh, detached um, uh, and then you have distributed reaction zone when you have uh, reactions happening in different spots um, uh, uh, happening in uh, different spots uh, in this things. So, this is the uh, the um, 
and uh, you have ignition happening at different uh, points in the in the flow. So, this is typically a very uh, basic regime diagram uh, which we have shown you and of course, this regime diagrams will become much more useful in the premix combustion. So, in this class what we have learned is that we have learned that uh, that uh, to analyze turbulent combustion one very important concept that can be introduced is a mixture fraction concept and the introduction of the mixture fraction concept uh, uh, what you can do is essentially of course, you solve for the uh, you essentially um, uh, 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 as soon as you have the mixture fraction concept we essentially can construct uh, go back to the 1D chamber flame and um, construct the, the solutions of the reactive scalars in terms of mass fraction and temperature exclusively of the function of the mixture fraction okay, and store that solution. Then for turbulent flames we essentially have to solve the uh, averaged uh, momentum equation, averaged uh, uh, kinetic energy, turbulent kinetic energy equation, scalar dissipation uh, mean uh, turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate equation that is a k epsilon model essentially. Uh, then the density for uh, variations uh, of course, I have to uh, take care by solving the other equations. Uh, you have to couple it with somehow and that coupling uh, for that uh, you essentially has to obtain this reactive scalar field. How you do that? You also then solve for the, uh, the average mixture fraction and the, uh, and the variance of the mixture fraction equation and as soon as you do that um, you know the average mixture fraction and average uh, the, the variance of mixture fraction at each point in your in your combustor. Okay. Then at each point in the combustor is uh, you basically construct a PDF okay, in, the, in the PDF of Z which tells you the what up, how much this, uh, this mixture fraction can vary uh, and this PDF is essentially controlled by your Z average your mean mixture fraction and the variance of mixture fraction which you already know at that point because you just solve the governing equations. After you do that, uh, you obtain so you have a uh, you know that uh, what is can be the distribution around this z and z primes, and uh, then uh, you essentially map your uh, your um, uh, your reactive scalars, uh, temperature, enthalpy, and uh, reactive scalars onto the mixture fraction by using the one d chamber flame solution, and um, uh, then immediately you know the all possible values of the temperature and uh, uh, and reactive scalars that can that can happen at that point, and then uh, by using that uh, p df of z you can immediately solve for the find out the average uh, of these reactive scalars that can uh, happen at this uh, particular points and then once again from those densities you can again couple back to the to the continuity and the momentum equations so this is how you can have a complete uh, solution of course you may this one may not like the idea that we use the um, 1d uh, uh, chamber flame uh, or this park schumann flame or an equilibrium solution at each point in the flow so for that one can uh, basically define uh, 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 one can go from the physical space to a mixture fraction space and uh, basically attach a coordinate system which is where the mixture fraction varies normal to the um, to the flame surface which is considered to be the mean mixture fraction uh, which is considered to be the stoichiometric isocontour of the mixture fraction and then uh, you basically transform your uh, reactive scalar equation from the physical space to the mixture fraction space and uh, then um, uh, you basically can obtain xi i this reactive scalar as a function of the mixture fraction. So, once again then going back uh, you can one can find out uh, given a steady or an unsteady situation uh, would and uh, choi ap appropriate choice of the scalar dissipation rate you know, one can find out the, the PDF uh, the, or the mean xi uh, or the mean reactive scalar at a particular point. And then of course, uh, we have seen that um, in this approach the one, one big takeaway is that the, the scalar dissipation rate emerges as the characteristic diffusivity of the reactive scalar in the mixture fraction space. And then uh, of course, we introduced uh, just came through or just a glance through the two modern approaches or uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this conditional moment closure and the PDF approach and then we closed it with the um, uh, turbulent non premixed um, combustion um, uh, diagram. So, this is uh, so much for the turbulent non premixed combustion and then in the next class we will take up turbulent premixed combustion and then later we will take up appropriate uh, we will we'll take up the practical uh, aero engine uh, combustors at the towards the end of the course. So, uh, till then uh, goodbye friends.